Oxygen Blast Technical Seminars are an Intertech production. For instructor-led.net, Java, and XML courses, visit us at www.intertech.com. All right, now let's talk about something a little more practical. We have in WPF support for a number of different types of projects, right? And based on which type of project you want to build, you're going to have different fundamental core types. Now, if you're trying to build a traditional desktop application, you know, main window, dialog boxes, maybe you want to deploy it through an MSI installer or maybe just an XCopy installation, well, then at bare minimum, and I'm talking bare minimum, you need to make use of two types, the window class and the application class. Now, if you have a background in Windows Forms development, you can kind of think of Window as the new form. Even though Windows Forms had an application class as well, this is a completely different one, which we subclass. You might remember back in Windows Forms, all the functionality was static. Okay? Now I'll show you a little demo using those two classes to build up a simple application in just a minute. We also have a different type of application which is called a navigationally based application, or just simply a navigation app. Right? What a navigation app allows us to do is to superimpose on top of a desktop executable this web-like navigation structure. So here's a screenshot of the, um, I think that was actually back when I had Vista installed, but uh, looks pretty similar on Windows 7. This is just the Windows Explorer, right? So using this navigation model, there's a class which is actually called Navigation Window. Navigation Window is a window which also has the ability to display this little history list. Right? A Navigation Window is the container of page objects. And essentially what a page object is, is a very lightweight window that cannot be displayed on its own. It has to be put inside of a container one of which is called the navigation window. Page objects, though, can also be put inside of these containers called frames. They can also be hosted by a browser. And if you have page objects that are hosted by a browser, you have one of these guys. You have an XBAP. Okay? An XBAP is sort of like a re-envisioned version of a really old technology some of you guys might remember. Uh, there was a technology years ago called an ActiveX document. Cool idea, you know, basically hosting a form in a browser, but it just didn't work all that great. Well, think of an XBAP as an ActiveX document done correctly, right? When you are building an XBAP, what you're essentially doing is you're going to be hosting a bunch of page objects under some dedicated virtual directory, right? The end user is able to navigate to that URI, and what gets sent over to them is this little XBAP, right? Which is basically a zip file, and inside of there is going to be a, a collection of compiled pages. And then the browser will host those inside of itself, right? Now, the great thing about XBAPs is that we're basically building a WPF project. So we can have the same level of sophistication inside of the browser that we might have on the desktop. Now there's a couple of drawbacks though. Right? The machine which is viewing the XBAP has to be a Windows machine, so this is not going to be cross-platform, because the client machine has to have the .NET framework installed. And not every single browser in the world is going to work. Um, they did just add support for Chrome, okay, so Chrome is also in that list now. But for an in-house application, XBAPs can be great, right? Because then you can get a very simple deployment model, very easy to update things, you just got to plop in your new XBAPs and pages, and the user has that web navigation experience. Now to make things a little more confusing, we have Silverlight. And at first glance, Silverlight and XBAP <clears throat> almost appear to be in some kind of weird competition, right? Well, here's the big 
point of differentiation. Remember that Silverlight is based on WPF technologies. But the key is, it is actually cross-platform, right? Microsoft has built up a Silverlight runtime for Mac OS, and of course Windows is also supported, okay? Now there's actually more support than just this, and I'll mention that in just one second. Now the thing which is also fairly different is that whereas an XBAP typically takes up the entire real estate of the viewing area in the browser, a Silverlight application is typically meant to be a smaller part of a bigger website, right? You know, think of Silverlight as basically Microsoft's competitor to Adobe Flash. Now, if you're interested in Silverlight, I would direct you to the official website. Just go to silverlight.net. You know, here you can go ahead and download the latest project templates for Visual Studio. And you can also see a whole host of different sample applications. Now, the cool thing about coming to this particular class, by the way, is that as you're learning WPF, you're also kind of indirectly learning Silverlight. Because again, they are based on the same core programming model. They're not identical, but they're very, very close. All right, now that extra bit I wanted to point out real quick. Let me just fire up my web browser for a minute. Some of you may have heard of a open source .NET framework called Mono. Mono-project.com. Well, the Mono team has built up something called Moonlight. Okay? Moonlight is an open source version of Silverlight. And this runs under Linux-based operating systems. So now, believe it or not too, they actually have support from Microsoft with this, right? So they're actually able to kind of work with them to build up Moonlight. So just like an Adobe Flash applet can be hosted on multiple operating systems, same thing with Silverlight. Obviously we're not gonna go into that here, but just like to point that out to people. Okay, now let me talk about this other little bit here too. WPF is a big, big technology. Tons and tons of things you can get into here. And the help system is really, really useful. If you've looked at the, the latest help system for .NET 4.0, you're aware that it's now all web-based. So even if you're running your help system on your local machine, it's going to be hosted up in a web browser here. Why don't I just open up the help system to show you the WPF area. So we can just come under .NET Framework 4. And there'll be an, a link here for WPF. And here's all the good stuff, right? Notice, for example, there's a whole area just on different flavors of data binding. I can get full information about graphics and multimedia, 3D graphics overview, right? Tons and tons of different things that we can look at. Lots and lots of different... Uh, samples to grab. So it's definitely worth your while to make sure that you spend time in the documentation. This will really help give you a full, full picture of what you can do with this technology. Now, let's get to some code. Not too surprisingly, WPF is really nothing more than a new set of assemblies. And within those assemblies, we have a collection of different namespaces. Again, no surprise to experience.NET people. Really, the, the crux of the functionality for WPF comes from these three libraries here. Windows Base, Presentation Core, and Presentation Foundation. Now, when you make a brand new WPF project with Visual Studio or Blend, you're going to get references to those automatically. For more free learning resources and to see the latest lineup of our instructor-led .NET, Java, and XML courses, visit us at www.intertech.com.